Good morning, I'm Robbie Cheadle from Robbie's Inspiration. And this morning I'm reading you a story called The Flying Dutchman. I'm reading it, it is from this book, Myths and Legends of Southern Africa by Penny Miller. This tale features in the law of many seagoing nations, differing only in the nationality of the cursed individual. In all cases, the legend is basically the same. A captain and his phantom ship with its ghostly crew are doomed to spend all eternity trying to double the Cape, but are always blown back by storms. The Flying Dutchman is one of the world's most famous ghosts. In the fourth century guise of the Hollander, Captain van der Decken, who purportedly diced with the devil for his soul, he has been sighted by many sailors. These reports were made seriously and in good faith and were entered into the log of the ships that sighted his own vessel. A famous instance occurred on 11 July 1881. One of the boats sailing in a special squadron under Louis of Battenberg, great uncle to the present Duke of Edinburgh, was the HMS um, Bachante. On it, a certain young midshipman, later to become King George V of, Eng of Britain, recorded in his diary. At 4 a.m., the Flying Dutchman crossed our bows. The lookout man on the forecastle reported that the ship was close to the port bow, where the officer of the watch also saw her clearly. A strange red light, as of a phantom ship, all aglow, in the midst of which light the mast, spars and sails of a brig 200 yards distant stood out in strong relief as she came up. Two other warships, the Cleopatra and the Tormelin, which were steaming in company with the Bachante, also sighted the phantom. To sailors, the appearance of the Flying Dutchman was always regarded as an evil omen. And in this encounter, true to legend, their fears were proven well-grounded. Barely seven hours later, the Royal Midshipman relates, the ordinary seaman who had reported the Flying Dutchman fell from the topmast cross trees and was smashed to atoms. His body was committed to the deep with full naval honors and his messmates were left certain that Thunder Dickon had gained another member for his ghostly crew. The Flying Dutchman will always hail any other vessel in sight so that the Phantom crew can send letters to the families and homes that they left so long ago. On a visit to South Africa, W. Clark Russell, the famed Victorian authority on sea and seafaring folk, met an old Captonian who had actually seen the phantom and was able to give a detailed account of it. He told Russell that if the captain of a ship heads towards the ghost ship to receive one of the messages from the Dutchman, he and his vessel are doomed. Thus poor van der Bedecken and his bleary-eyed and storm-battered sailors are forever yearning to communicate with those homes which have long ago ceased to exist, but the mariner knowing the penalty of accepting the mission, flies from their approach. The phantom ship, after a short chase, desolately shifts her helm and braces herself once again against the gale, which prevents her from doubling the cape. The Flying Dutchman has been seen by many people simultaneously. A great crowd of holiday makers on Glen Khan Beach near Simonstown watched her for as long as half an hour. And in 1939, she was clearly seen sailing off the Musenberg coast. In 1959, the Dutch freighter Straat Magelhein reported sighting a huge wind jammer coming straight towards it. Her sails were full set and a man was seen at her wheel. She appeared so swiftly out of the night that there was no chance of avoiding a collision. But just as she was about to strike, she seemed to disintegrate and vanished before their eyes. Although Diaz, that's Marco Diaz, and his brave companions were gone forever, others came after him. Perhaps 
Adamastor grew old and feeble and was unable to ward off the invaders of his domain. Or maybe it was that Jupiter relented and set him free to search for his lost love. But by the middle of the 17th century, Cape Town was a bustling seaport building its own history and creating its own legends. Very few buildings from those distant days remain, but undoubtedly the most famous of these is the old Cape Town Castle. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed the story.